There are all sorts of cool things that you can do with Vex. And one of those is finding the nearest position on a surface. And that's otherwise known as the min pause function. So I wanted to take a look at how to go about using this function inside Vex. So let's drop in a geometry node to start off here. We're also gonna need a line and then our attribute wrangle. Now we're also gonna need some points or some surface to copy or to find the surface of. So let's go ahead and create a box. I'm gonna do a points from volume. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm gonna turn off our point numbers here. Let's just up the point separation some here, change the jitter seed and the jitter scale to give us some randomness in there. Now let's create some spheres to copy onto these points. Set the scale down to something like 0 0.05 and we'll just copy two points. Go ahead and wire that into there. Now we have our spheres copied onto those points. Let's go ahead and template that. We'll need that here in a second. Let's also wire that into the second input and we'll take a look back at our attribute wrangle. Now we don't want to affect all of our points here. So let's bring up back our point numbers. You can see we only have two points to choose from, but I want to only affect the point zero because I want to set the position of this point equal to whatever position that we return from the min pause. So let's go ahead and do at P. So we're gonna get our position and we're gonna set that equal to min pause. And it needs some variables to run. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. If we take a look at our help doc here, we see that we have a, this top one is the bare minimum that it needs to run. So it needs to have the geometry specified as well as a vector. So we can also set a, a max distance, which we're gonna take a look at as well. So what that means is we need to do a geometry input, which is gonna be one of these inputs that we brought in, and then it needs the position. So let's go ahead and set up our max distance here so we can do that all at once. Let's do f at max dist equals to chf to create a float, and then we'll name it just like max distance just for uniformity and let's go back down here so for the second input in coding that's going to be a starting at a value of zero so zero is going to be the first input then it's going to go one two and three so we'll do one for the second input and like i said before we're going to set this equal to the position and then max distance so our max distance variable that we created at max dist Oops, and then we will finish off our statement here. Let's go ahead and create our value. And I'll just up this for now. And you can see it has snapped to one of these points. Now, if I set this lower, it's not going to snap because it's not inside of that value or inside of that range. So if I go ahead and change this offset here, as I start to drag this up, maybe a little bit slower than that, you can see that once it gets inside of that range, it's going to snap to that point, which is pretty cool. You can do all sorts of things with this. You can also go back in here if we want it to snap further. We can just up that a little bit. I'm back in here and just drag this around, and you can see that it is snapping all over the place. So you can use this for all sorts of things. There's a lot of cool different things that you can use this for, such as like creating lasers, things like that, that you need to, or that you don't want to just go beyond an object. Maybe you want it to hit an object and start cutting through it. You have some sort of an animation for the object getting cut in half, something like that. That'd be a cool use for it. I do have some pro a project that I created that I'm gonna be going over in the next video that's gonna be a little more in depth with this. It's gonna be an, an actual like use case for an animation. So. Pretty cool stuff there, so make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss that video. But I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel, some over some stuff on Cinema 4D, Redshift, inside of Houdini and Cinema 4D. 
I got some stuff on Octane Clarice as well. So if you're interested in any of that, and of course, Houdini stuff in there as well. If you want to learn any of that type of stuff, make sure you guys check those videos out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.